So there are various kinds of activation functions present in the world of deep learning. And the purpose of each activation function is to convert the linearly separable output which you will get during the pre-activation step that is after multiplying the inputs to their respective weights and adding the bias and converting that linearly separable output into a non-linear output. So that is a function of activation function. There are various kinds of activation function and out of those different kinds of activation function, today we will be discussing about sigmoid and tanh activation function. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Let's first talk about sigmoid activation function. So the job of sigmoid activation function is to convert or I can say to scale down the inputs in the range of 0 to 1. So whatever input you give to your sigmoid activation function, it will scale it down uh, two values between 0 and 1. Whether you will put a very large negative number or a very small negative number or a very large positive number or a very small positive number, it will try to convert the input into a range of or I can say it will try to convert the input between the range of 0 to 1. So for example, if I put input as x is equal to 2, here x is the value that I will, that I will be getting after the pre-activation step. So it will convert it between 0 and 1. Same for minus 1 and same for 0. If I look towards the graph of sigmoid function, then the graph of sigmoid function looks something like this. Here you can see that my slope is very smooth and at x is equal to 0, my, uh, uh, my curve is differentiable and continuous and at x is equal to 0, the value of my output is going to be 0 0.5. And this is the formula of my sigmoid activation function where Z is the value that you will be getting during the pre-activation step. That is, uh, Z is a value that is of, for example, once you put a uh, input inside your neurons, then the input get multiplied to their respective weights. And after that, a bias term is added. After solving this value, I will get some value and that value is Z. Now let us discuss some advantages of sigmoid activation function. So here you can, as you have already seen that the curve is very smooth. So there are no, not going to be any jumps between the output values. Another advantage is that all the output values are going to be between 0 and 1. So we can say that the neuron output is going to be normalized. And the third, and the third benefit of using sigmoid activation function is that you will get a very clear cut output. For example, uh, what I mean to say is that your output is going to be close to either 0 or 1. So whatever, you, so whatever input you feed to your neural network, you will be sure that my output is going to be either close to 1 or close to 0. There are not going to be any random number. It is either going to be close to 1 or 0. But there are many dis disadvantages of sigmoid activation function. For example, our sigmoid output are not 0 centered. So we know that our output prediction is going to be either between 0 and 1. So since it is going to be 0 and 1, if I take the mean of the output values, it is going to be coming between 0 and 1, for example, 0 0.5. And since it is not coming to be equal to 0, therefore we can say that the sigmoid output are not going to be 0 centered. So since it is not zero centered, therefore, during the uh, weight update, uh, whenever we are trying to update the weight, its efficiency is reduced. Also, because during in the inside the formula, you can see that there are exponential terms involved. So the time complexity increases and therefore uh, sigmoid activation function takes relatively more time than other activation functions. If you have a very large neural network, then you can easily then you will be easily able to notice the difference between using other activation function, for example, ReLU and using a sigmoid activation function because sigmoid activation function takes a lot uh, longer. Uh, because sigmoid activation function has exponential terms involved, therefore, we can say that it will try to take more time. It will take more time. And also the third biggest disadvantage is that it is prone to gradient vanishing. That is vanishing gradient problem. It is a very popular problem and it is also asked in many interviews. Uh, so I have already dedicated a proper a video for vanishing gradient where I have discussed the logic, intuition, as well as the mathematics behind vanishing gradient. So you can look into that for vanishing gradient problem. Now the other activation function is hyperbolic tangent function or we can say tanh activation function whose formula is this its curves are very much similar to that of sigmoid they are also very smooth just like sigmoid 
just like as a sigmoid was smooth near zero here it is also a uh, smooth but the uh, main difference is that it extends uh, its output value also include negative values if we try to compare it with the sigmoid then we can say that it is little better than sigmoid and why is that it is because the activation functions output are zero centric because sigmoid is not zero centric you will get a uh, output uh, you will always get output that is between zero and one but in case of tan h you uh, because there are some negative output you can see here there are negative output here there are positive output therefore you can say that you can uh, if you take a mean you will get zero so in case of tannage you can say that it is zero centric now let us discuss the disadvantages of tannage so one of the disadvantages is that since you can see there are exponent terms or power operations occurring inside the formula therefore it is going to be time consuming and the other base, uh, biggest disadvantage is that of vanishing gradient so just uh, similar to sigmoid activation function in case of tannage you are also going to encounter vanishing gradient problems so in this video we learned about sigmoid activation function and tannage activation function and in the next video we will be learning about relu activation function as well as the variants of relu that are leaky relu p relu and elu so we will meet in the next video until then bye bye